today is um, uh, in somehow a perfect way to solidify our uh, ongoing rich cooperation and somehow a perfect start of the year. This is the first signing ceremony of the MSDCF that we have uh, this year uh, with you and St. Lucia in the Caribbean. Uh, so let me therefore uh, again take this opportunity on behalf of the United Nations team to extend our best wishes for the new year to yourself, Prime Minister, uh, and to the government of St. Lucia and the people of St. Lucia. It's a significant day for all of us as we formalize, as you know, the signing of the UN Multi-Country Sustainable Development Cooperation Framework, which will cover the years 2022 to 2026. And we do this after a year of consultations of, uh, at various levels. So we have arrived at a point uh, where we believe we have a clear roadmap on how the UN will support the various Caribbean countries and territories, 22 in total, including St. Lucia, and uh, basically to achieve two urgent priorities. One, uh, to accelerate progress towards the attainment of the sustainable development goals. And in that context, you know that uh, this is extremely uh, extremely important, more urgent than ever, and two, to facilitate a faster recovery from the socioeconomic and health impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, we tend to refer to this uh, cooperation framework as one that has uh, never been as significant as this one, because we, we are confronted with uh, uh, and, and you face this every day, extraordinary circumstances. Uh, this uh, global pandemic alongside the climate crisis, which poses an existential threat to the region, uh, a deteriorating fiscal space with increasing unsustainable debt levels. And somehow uh, we think that we are at risk of losing years of development gains that have been so hard to gain. And, and also a risk of decelerating progress towards the sustainable development uh, goals. So uh, Prime Minister, we, we know that we, you're a very strong advocate for putting people first. And I think you would appreciate uh, this people-centric five-year cooperation framework. Allow me to uh, just list the four key priorities which are critical uh, we, we think uh, for achieving resilience uh, and sustainable development in the Caribbean. Uh, first, and, and unlike actually the previous cooperation framework, uh, we have increased our support to the economic resilience agenda. For example, to improve business competitiveness and enhance government efforts to diversify their economies, as well as to manage sustainable uh, level of debts. Uh, and uh, we came to that conclusion together that these are absolute imperatives for economic recovery from COVID-19, but also for mitigating against future economic shocks. So under this area, Prime Minister, we also look forward to supporting the youth economy agenda of your government. And we have discussed, and as you know, we're going to launch in the coming weeks, a new uh, joint program with several UN agencies under the uh, SDG uh, fund on innovative finance. And St. Lucia is one of the two countries that will directly benefit uh, from this, including specifically for this youth agenda, as well as debt management. Uh, secondly, we'll uh, um, intensify our efforts to ensure that uh, no one is truly left behind. Uh, by furthering the human rights agenda, we'll support policies to eliminate all forms of discrimination and measures as well to reduce structural inequalities, especially for the most vulnerable. And that's probably uh, extremely relevant in that context. So that will include efforts to ensure equal access to quality social services with uh, ongoing work um, on, on health and education, as well as shock responsive social protection. And I must say, Prime Minister, that our joint program for uh, universal adaptive social protection in partnership with your government has already been reaping significant benefits as it relates to the provision of cash transfer and top ups to the most vulnerable in St. Lucia. So we really hope to leverage on this success, which is really uh, being promoted as a best practice in the, in the region to further support those most at risk in St. Lucia. And I know that agencies continue to expand this work uh, in your country in this area. Uh, thirdly, in the area of climate change, the MSDCF reflects uh, very strongly our commitment to enhancing national capacity for gender responsive disaster risk reduction, but also support the climate change adaptation agenda. And at the same time, we strengthen our support on natural res uh, resource or ecosystems management. The fourth pillar, finally, will deliver the UN support for ensuring Carib that Caribbean countries remain peaceful 
and, and just societies. So the UN uh, plans to further scale up its cooperation for fighting gender-based violence, increase access to justice, promote social cohesion, and also improve community safety and security. And again, we know this is uh, an area of your interest and, uh, for, by your government. So therefore, we'll continue to further our cooperation, especially in this area of security and crime prevention. Finally, uh, to achieve these priorities, new partnerships will need to be, to be forced to be scaled up while intensifying citizen engagement. So we'll explore with you and your government opportunities for more innovative and sustainable financing, for example. But, and I will end with this as, um, as an immediate step, we'll operationalize our commitment through the ongoing preparation on the first two year country implementation plan specific to St. Lucia. So basically this uh, two year country implementation plan for 2022-2023, which is being uh, finalized at the moment, will translate the broad commitments of the cooperation framework into a very tailored plan of actions that will bring together the entire UN system as one uh, behind this ambition. And this is a, a fundamental change in our business model that we had already piloted last year. So we look forward to, to your leadership, Prime Minister, to finalize this plan, of course, so that it reflects uh, uh, well uh, your expectation and is aligned with the national priority is in St. Lucia. So again, uh, I want to thank you for, for your trust, uh, for uh, the partnership uh, with, your, with uh, your government. You can count on us, you see, uh, you have a team that is widely represented today. Uh, to uh, precisely uh, deliver on these ambitious commitments and, and to support you in this uh, difficult moment. So again, best wishes to, to you and to your government for 2022. Let me first of all thank you for, for having St. Lucia involved in the signing of the Multi-Country Sustainable Development Corporation Framework. It, it's happening in these times when all the news always appears to be bad that there, there is a glimmer of hope from our friends in, in the UN. Um, as you know, our country has been ravaged by the fifth wave of the COVID pandemic and all vulnerabilities of our, of our country, they are exposed. Our health systems, our health system is fragile, it's under pressure. Our education system is even under, on, under tremendous pressure. As we have to debate whether we can have children at school or children at home. So it, it's a very difficult time. So, so it's happening to, to be here this morning to sign this, this framework. And I'm very pleased with the priority areas that have been, that have been set by the UN and, and said by DDA this morning. So, so our size as a developing nation and the complexities of our social economic situation demands an approach to development that involves people. And it is the solemn mantra and belief and objective of my government to put people first. The, the UN has a, has a long history of working with governments in, in the region to address these critical issues. The signing of the multi-country sustainable development framework provides an opportunity to strengthen our partnership with the United Nations and to reaffirm our commitment to the development activities towards the 2040 Agenda. The 2040 Agenda for Sustainable Development outlines ambitious goals to achieve a better world for all by 2040. It creates the avenue for collective action and efforts and joint effort by government, civil society, and every citizen to build a better future. The COVID pandemic has demonstrated the need for a unified approach to transform our social and economic realities as a country. Over the past two years, the pandemic exposed our fra the fragile nature of our country. We witnessed rapid increases in, un in unemployment as the key economic sectors of tourism almost grinded to a halt. As a government, with a people-focused agenda, we are aware of the resulting effect of the pandemic on poverty and the quality of life of our people. We welcome this opportunity to collaborate through the UN to advance the agenda for 2040, which represents a plan of action for people, planet, and prosperity. The 17 sustainable development goals that support this agenda 
compel us as a nation to find innovative strategies to end poverty, address inequalities, and address the pressing issue of climate change. As we continue to make progress towards these SDGs, we acknowledge our achievements, but remain aware that we have a long way to go. Despite the challenges in fulfilling the obligations of the SDGs, the government of St. Lucia remains resolute to put people first. Against this background, we embrace the philosophy of the UN, that is to leave no one behind. Number the country's sustainable development framework is consistent with our development strategy to strengthen our social and economic resilience as a country. To achieve this, we will pursue policies that will influence the systems to improve access to quality healthcare, education, and a conducive, safe environment for every citizen to prosper. In essence, we'll make every effort as a government to reduce the risk of being left behind. The multi-country sustainable development framework provides a framework to address challenges and vulnerabilities, including, but not limited, to our financial and economic vulnerabilities. So I please said by so I please address this morning. Our inadequate social systems and weak disaster risk management and sustainable management of our natural resources. The framework defines eight outcomes that the United Nations, together with the regional partners, have resolved to jointly focus efforts for the next five years to shift the, the socioeconomic trajectory of the Caribbean. The government of St. Lucia will work with the UN to address these bottlenecks that hinder the realization of benefits associated with these outcomes. The endorsement of the multi-country sustainable development cooperation framework demonstrates the willingness of the government of St. Lucia to contribute to significant structural changes in the economies and governance systems. Towards equity for all, resilience to climate change and shocks, and peace, safety, justice, and the rule of law, not forgetting economic resilience and shared prosperity for all. The implementation of strategic actions to realize these broad goals require resources. The identification of resources to address the demands associated with our socio-economic realities remain a pressing challenge for us as a developing country. Our limited resources were stretched to respond to health and economic problems associated with the pandemic. Our policy responses resulted in increases in public debt beyond established prudential ratios. What this means is that our economic stability is at risk. We are more vulnerable. This signals the need for responsive policies and strategies and help from our friends. I'm indeed pleased that this framework will serve as a platform for the UN to provide more effective support, not just to St. Lucia, but to the region as a whole. We share a vision of the UN for St. Lucia, and I quote, the region to become more resilient, possess greater capacity to achieve all the SDGs, and become a place where people choose to live and can reach their full potential in peace. At this juncture, I take the, this opportunity to thank the UN for this invaluable and timely intervention and to reiterate the government of St. Lucia's commitment to building the socioeconomic resilience of our country. This framework is an important instrument that will contribute to the efforts to build, to build back better and to hasten the recovery post-COVID. We look forward to the continued support of the UN as we work together to our national development goals and continue to put people first. I thank you. Mm -hmm.